But I printed it, bad interior finish, get it out of here. This one has some bad Z seams on the side. It's bad, get it out of here. Okay, so in all seriousness, guys, if you have never seen my channel, I'm the print house. Guys, I have an eBay business. I do it on the side and I make somewhere in the neighborhood of 8,000 to probably $12,000 a year on the side selling parts that my cat shits on and maybe your cat if you buy my parts but guys so yeah and over the course of the last year or year and a half i have compiled a list of a lot of good business practices that i think everyone should follow if they want to get into selling parts on ebay or etsy or any other platform so guys i've got all of these tips coming up let's go Alright guys, so this one kind of sucks and it's boring, but if one of your customers or one of your potential customers sends you a message, you just ha you have to reply. Every single message, you have to reply. For one, if it's a potential customer and you don't reply, you're losing possible business, you're losing exposure. And if it's a customer and you get a message and you don't reply, that's just being a bad after sales uh, you know, representative, if you will. And maybe it's nothing that important to you, but you have no idea how important it is to them. And think about it as a role reversal. If you are the customer and you send the message, hey, uh, what's so special about this product? Well, okay, yeah, you have a description on there and maybe the customer should know what's so special about your product, but it's a good practice to just reply, be nice, be kind, and you might get yourself a sale. So this next tip is huge. It's probably one of the biggest tips I can give you, and that is to use the same filament every time. Guys, I use Esun PLA Plus. That's exclusively what I use for my parts that don't need to be heat resistant, that don't need extra strong durability. I exclusively use Esun PLA Plus because I trust it. I use it at home for my products. And that's what I want to give to my customers. I want to know what I'm giving to my customers. If you choose to you know, transition to a new filament, that's fine, but you need to be consistent. So if you start to use Esun PLA Plus and you're like, this stuff's crap, I don't want to use it, and you want to transition to something else, go for it. But make sure, like I said, make sure you're consistent because you want to know what your customers are getting. If you're sending a cu uh, each customer a different product every single time, with the same design, you have no idea what they're receiving because it might break on them after day one, it might break after day two, it might never break, you have no idea. Guys, use the same filament, it's definitely the way to go. So these next two are so closely related that I'm just gonna combine them essentially, and that's if your customer wants a replacement because their part broke, just give them a free replacement. Maybe try and have them pay for shipping, but at the end of the day, just give them a free replacement. It's so, so, so cheap. I mean, the cost of filament and producing these parts, just it just does not add up to not giving them a free replacement. It's just so cheap. And if your customer wants a refund, give them a refund. If they want a refund, they're going to get it even if you don't give it to them. They will contact Amazon or eBay or Etsy or whatever selling platform you use and that selling platform is gonna side with the buyer every single time. So just offer them the refund and don't fight with them. Keep your customers happy. Even if they want a refund, keep your customers happy. All right, I really shouldn't have to say this, but guys, don't ship products that are not up to quality standard. That is, I mean, that has got to be one of the biggest, biggest, biggest good business strategies. I've got two products here, both different products. This one has a bad interior finish. It's just a funnel, but I printed it, bad interior finish, get it out of here. This one has some bad Z seams on the side. It's bad get it out of here guys you don't want to give your customers a bad product if your printer is not producing a product that is quality 
kick it up to high gear, get your printer on, fix your printer because don't ship bad products. Just don't ship any at all until you fix your printer. My next tip is to print an inventory. Guys, there's nothing worse than getting home from school or from your actual nine to five job, getting a sale that you weren't expecting, going to your printer and realizing you have no filament and that sucks. So please print an inventory this way whenever you get home from your job, whenever you get home from school or whatever you do, you can just go to the shelf, pull it off the shelf and then put it in the box, package it up, send it out. So if your inventory gets low, you know it's getting low, you need to go buy some filament, you need to print a lot of inventory, and then, you know, then you've got enough to last you. So my recommendation is to always print about one and a half or two times the amount of items you sell. So if you sell item A about 20 times a month, you need to print about 30 of that item at the beginning of the month. This way you always have enough. Because if you have a really hot month and you don't have extra items on hand, <laughs> you're gonna have to print some. And printing for uh, for sale, printing on demand is really, really stressful. It's really time consuming. It's better to just print them all at once, have them ready to go. Now this is an example of my inventory. I've got a lot of these parts on hand. I have a lot more than I need to have on hand, but I sell maybe five or 10 of these a month, absolute max. I really don't sell very many of this particular item, but I've got about 50 of them printed, which means this is gonna last me about five months, realistically, maybe even more. And that's great because I don't have to stress about printing this part, I don't have to stress about running out of this part. I have it, I know I'm not gonna run out, and when I get a sale for it, I just pick it off, like I said, put it in the package, send it off. Okay, so guys, you can't expect your customers to be good to you and leave you a good review if you're not going to leave them a good review. So after about two or three days after the product has been delivered to their address and they don't have any inquiries, go ahead and leave them a good review because like I said, you can't expect them to leave you a good review if you don't leave them a good review. It's kind of the mutual respect thing. So go ahead sell some products and give your customers good reviews. It helps everyone. So this one might not actually be obvious to everyone and that is to include instructions in your packaging if your product requires instructions. So I just have my instructions printed on standard printer paper and I printed the instructions at home. Your instructions don't have to be anything advanced but if your customer receives the product and they have no idea how to use it, they're not gonna be happy a not happy customer means you're not doing business the right way. This one's gonna confuse you guys a little bit, but don't use the filament at the bottom of the spool. There's just not enough filament on here to merit you using it. It's only gonna cause you grief. It's only gonna cause you the possibility of having failed prints, of having prints that just don't turn out to the standards that you need to sell. And you can use this for your own personal use. Save it for that, but in terms of your business side of things, this only costs your business like maybe 25 cents. Count this as waste and then move on. You guys are gonna be really, really confused about this one and that is put a watch on your competitor's eBay listings. Put a watch on your competitor's Amazon listings and monitor it. Monitor their price, monitor their quality, monitor everything about their listing because if they drop their price, you need to drop your price also. And that might come across as being a little bit of a competitive marketing strategy, but really that's offering your customers or your potential customers the deal they deserve. If your competitor drops their price, you need to also drop your price. You cannot start charging your customers double or even triple the price of what your competitor is offering it at because that's essentially scamming your customers. So guys, like I said, it might come off as competitive marketing, but you know, if your customer drops their price or ups their quality, you gotta match that. And just like that, guys, that is everything. But there is more on my channel and there is more to come. So please give me a like and a subscribe. Put some comments down below with what you wanna see. And then ring the bell and go over to my channel, find some more top 10 tips, watch them, and let me know what you think. Guys, that's all I've got. Anyway, I'm out.